Hi, everyone. So happy to see all of you here. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for the 2020 Singapore Literature Festival in New York City. Welcome to our sneak preview of the festival. My name is uh, Ji Leong Ko, and I'm the founder and organizer of Singapore Unbound, and I'm your host tonight. I'm wearing a white shirt and sitting in my home office with a shelf of books behind me. My preferred pronouns are he and him. Organized by the NYC-based literary nonprofit Singapore Unbound, the Singapore Literature Festival brings together Singaporean and American authors and audiences for readings and discussions. Appropriately for this time, the festival theme this year is the politics of hope. We want to acknowledge gratefully the sponsorship of Ethos Books and many private champions, as well as the support of our co-presenters, New Narrative, The Evergreen Review, Asia Society, Adelphi University's MFA program and Soapbox series, NYU English Department's Post-Colonial Race and Diaspora Studies Colloquium, the Southeast Asian Studies program at the University of California, Riverside, and Books Actually. Tonight, we have the pleasure of viewing a specially commissioned performance by artist Melinda Lau, who has translated the works of several festival authors into an ASMR experience. My pleasure now to introduce you to Melinda. Melinda Lau is an artist, experienced designer and immersive creator working across the fields of art, immersive entertainment and experiential marketing. She's a co-founder of Whisper Lodge, a production company pioneering the practice of live ASMR, Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Please welcome Melinda. Hi everyone. Thank you for the introduction, G. Um, my name is Melinda Lau and I am wearing a green and white striped shirt. Uh, and I'm sitting in my room against uh, some very big sliding doors behind me. Um, my preferred pronouns are she, her. Um, so in this performance, I play the role of a festival guide, a virtual festival guide, and I'll be doing an ASMR interpretation of some of the featured books in this festival. Um, it's going to last around 30 minutes and it's meant to be rather slow and relaxing. So please get comfortable and um, lay back. I hope you enjoy the show. Um, I'm going to uh, start the performance now. Hi, welcome to the fourth biennial Singapore Literature Festival in New York City. My name is Melinda and I will be your virtual festival guide for the next few minutes. I'd like to invite you to relax and enjoy all the visuals and sounds that I'm about to share. The way I see it, this festival is about learning, exploring, and being present with our wonderful lineup of authors and speakers engaging with the various topics that they wish to highlight through their work. Now my job is to help you focus. I want to draw your attention to parts of the program that are particularly tingly, as we ASMR fans like to call it. Before we dive in, I'd like us to take three deep breaths together so please set aside your phone. If you are multitasking, please come back to this window. <laughs> That's it. Very good. Okay, you can close your eyes if you like. Take a deep breath in.
last one in and out so let me start by sharing the festival program I've printed it out on some paper and card. So this festival is organized by Singapore Unbound, which is a New York City based literature nonprofit. And the goal of the festival is to bring together authors and audiences from America and Singapore to create conversations about literature and society. This is actually the first year that we are going online and our theme is the politics of hope. This theme responds to the current fraught yet hopeful moment for social justice, human rights, and democracy. And it applies in Singapore, America, and all over the world. The festival spans four days, including the previews, which is today. And there are three other days um, filled with events. There are a total of eight from October the 1st to the 3rd. Now this whole festival program is available online, so I'm not going to go through every single event. I'm just going to pick three. Starting with this one right here. It's on Thursday, October the 1st, from 9.30 to 10.30 EST. It's called Launch Off and the Walls Come Crumbling Down, Tanya Di Rosario and Leah Pipsna Samarasana. The event is moderated by Judy Luo and co-presented by Books Actually. I happen to have a copy of Tanya's book right now. Here it is. The book is quite slim and comes with a smooth, velvety cover. And I love this cascade of curved text as if everything is really crumbling down. We're going to zoom into this book right now. Tanya's book is part memoir and part poetic rumination. It follows a young queer woman in Singapore as she packs up and leaves her home. The book contains so many vivid and tactile descriptions of her old termite ridden home. And though this probably isn't what her house looked like, it's what I interpreted it to be. Through the materiality of this crumbling house, the main character recalls memories of her family, try 
nice to move on from her lover and reflects on the larger context of constant change in Singapore's built environment. I'll read a short paragraph from this book as I deconstruct this house. Meanwhile, I've placed the feet of our bed in containers of oil. I've sealed all our paintings in glad wrap. all her clothes in polystyrene boxes. I've dabbed the door frames with vertebrae. I'm surrounded by so much synthetic material that everywhere I turn, something squeaks. My chair over cracked portions of my floor, now lined with bubble wrap. My life is going downhill in a series of mini explosions. Pop, pop. is this one. Friday, October 2nd, 8 to 9 p.m. EST. The political possibilities of the short story. Nurelia Nurasid and Rico Villanueva Shisoko, moderated by Inez Tan and co-presented by the Southeast Asian Studies Program at the University of California, Riverside. I have Rico's book with me here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Holy Artist is a collection of nine short stories featuring intersectional women and men in the Filipino diaspora in America. I found these stories to be really personal and complex and it was really fun because some of the characters would travel across the different stories in the book. That's the case for most of them, but not the main character from the short story that's right in the center of this book. It's the Foley artist. 
So this is the story that gave name to this book. And it features an old man called Barong. Barong is an elderly man living alone above a pornography shop. And as the story begins, we very quickly realize that he is no longer in his prime. In fact, it's gotten to a point where he's starting to feel like human interactions are a bit frustrating. There's a very strong sense of disconnect between his world and what he notices around him versus what other people in society can see. The funny thing is that because Barong used to be a Foley artist for the film industry, he maintained a keen sense of hearing. And throughout his story, there are all these little moments where he picks up on that, despite all the frustration and difficulty with humans. He'll notice the way uh, a paper sounds as it slides across the counter, or he'll notice the sound of telephone buttons being pressed, and it's always super tactile. And this really also aligns with how I approach making ASMR. It's all about the small sounds and textures in our everyday life. So I want to give you a demonstration in the spirit of Barong's character. Just noticing all these sounds and also showing you some of the Foley props that ASMR tends to use. Um, let's begin. So I'd like you to imagine that you just got home after a long day. It's cold, it's winter outside, and you put down all your things. You go to your favorite couch and you just lay down. It's a leather couch. Let you sit. You hear the cushion. You get adjusted, find your comfortable spot. And your partner comes along with a cup of tea. Comes in a glass, your favorite mug. Perhaps. He is very hot. So you set it aside. Your partner offers to give you a head massage. They very gently swipe away the hair from your face. And very gently begin massaging your head.
you begin to relax, you notice the sound of the fireplace in your living room. slowly drift off, you begin to go into a dream state. And in your dream, you are walking down a gravel path lined with the trees. As you walk, you begin to notice something orange on the floor just ahead. You continue walking towards it and decide to pick it up. It's the whole program. And we're back again. Now we're about to go to the third and last event that I wanted to highlight. It's this one here. This event takes place on Friday, October the 2nd, 9.30 to 10.30 EST. Celebrity and Celebration. Amanda Lee Ko and Paula Mendoza, moderated by Diane Josephowitz and co-presented by Asia Society. Both of these authors will be reading to you and having a discussion. Today though, I have one book from Paula Mendoza. I'll play for time, and it's the book that she will be discussing. This book won the 2019 Gaudy Boy Poetry Book Prize, and it's a series of really lovely, playful poems that kind of bring you out of your own world into this book. Which one should I choose? I think I'll choose the very first one. This one is called Spell. After Antarctica and before the viscose, in between Hearts Atria and Chamber Music, a 
paltry offering when you took what you could get. Horses unseen, rhubarb crenellations. The note read, ship her back to mother. When I am not around, bad things happen. A hero like Captain Planet's mullet, I am taking the pie with me. I unsettle it. Some mornings, a Bacchus and other nights, Varushka in the bed on fire. Tender, even if shivered leafless, for Scythia, for instance. In my net are Numa. I pin onto tiny satin pillows. Iridest, you're dead. Commandment after commandment trembles my little chisel. Shattered the slab, I can be forgetting the low-hanging mysticals. Salamandrine or begotten. I shimmy onto my hind hooves, come time be stood. Mm, to end and into eating my tail, haberdasher her Kremlin Siam. Chortle your knockers and slut it for the kingdom. Helsinki gone down singing Megadeth. Mourners hum accompaniment. Mostly free jazz and coke jingles. it to sing and feed it full of murka. A man's business is mastery. Now the spell is complete. With all my mystical powers, I bless you with 
curiosity, empathy, and wisdom as you navigate the festival ahead. Here. Use this as your personal spellbook. And I'll see you very soon in October. Until then, be well. Thank you so much, Melinda, for that performance. It's quite a performance that you uh, got going there. I mean, it's incredible, really, all those scene changes and the costume changes and the number of props that you actually lined up and handled, you know, all by yourself. Uh, so thank you so much, really, for the wonderful, wonderful way of actually uh, thinking about books, right? Who knew that books could actually be translated into such a uh, supercharged, I think, you know, sensory uh, performance. Uh, as I'm, you know, watching your performance, you know, I felt like I'm at a loss for words to actually describe all the various sounds you managed to get out of the objects. You know, for example, when you're, you know, uh, reversing the uh, hourglass looking object, you know, yes, it's ringing, but it's also cascading, right? So it's cascading ringing or ringing cascading or something like that. But of course, words cannot capture, you know, how the sound is simultaneously both, isn't it? So that's really, really terrific. Thank you so much, actually, for doing that. Uh, I just want to tell our audience that you know uh, we're very uh, that you have any questions for Melinda about ASMR in general or her production company Whisper Lodge or her performance tonight uh, that you could actually type your questions into chat and I'll be very happy to ask uh, your questions uh, on your behalf. Okay, um, how do you feel watching it um, again? Uh, it felt so strange to me actually. I don't really enjoy watching myself, <laughs> but um, thank you so much for the kind comments. I'm seeing some already in the chat. Um, it was really like very fun to make actually. Um, being able to like select every single object based off the books and also having some uh, in some ways like a frame to begin making a video is very helpful. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And everyone, if you actually open your chat box, you can see some wonderful comments, all right? And questions coming in, are right? including one from uh, Dee, Dee Miller. Hi, Dee, uh, who asks, uh, you know, uh, Melinda, can you tell us more about ASMR? Um, and I would add to that, you know, because it's such a vast topic, I'm sure, you know, I mean, um, for those of us who are not familiar with ASMR, I mean, might be wondering, why are you whispering? <laughs> throughout. I mean, it's a very integral part, isn't it, of, uh, yeah. of an ASMR experience. Yeah, uh, so like a simple uh, definition of ASMR is this like tingly relaxing sensation um, that can be triggered by visual, audio or tactile stimuli. And most people know ASMR because it's a huge thing on YouTube. Uh, there are professional ASMR artists who create whispering videos and role play videos, all sorts of like very tactile sound based uh, videos to help trigger that feeling and um, there are millions of people who watch these videos to help them sleep and relax. Mm. Yeah, so why the whispering? Is it for just to uh, help people to relax or is there also some other aesthetic or somatic, you know, uh, benefits? Um, so whispering is like probably the top trigger, like everyone has their own ASMR triggers, but whispering is like commonly understood to be the main thing and the first thing for a lot of people. And if you look into like the theories of why ASMR exists, there's no hard science backing it up at the moment. But one of the main uh, theories people have is that it's related to when we were still a baby or even like still in the womb and we would hear all these muffled sounds that we cannot really decipher, but they just sound really like whispery. And that, uh, soundscape um, helps us to feel comforted and relaxed and so it lends itself to whispering and all these strange almost like weirdly amplified sounds from everyday life. Mm, it's so interesting. Yes, there's a very you know comforting uh, uh, feeling to it, isn't it? But isn't it also a little as you said, you know, tingly at the beginning, right? That's also a little scary too, isn't it? About something, you know, somebody whispering to you because you can't help but wondering why the person is not speaking at their usual volume. 
What do you think? Yeah, I think it it that's uh, a lot of a lot of ASMR artists you'll see online are female, and I do think that there's a reason for that. And the softer mm. or gentler your voice is, the more it tends to relax people. Sometimes when I listen to uh, male ASMR videos, I feel a bit like creeped out. So it's also <laughs> a matter of like personal preference. But yes, okay. ASMR is not for everyone. Some people feel really like uh, invaded when they hear some sounds really close to them. Yes, yeah, it's so interesting, isn't it? It's also gender, isn't it? Right? You yeah. know, it's very different depending on who you are, you know, whether you hear a, a male whispering or as well as, uh, versus a female uh, whispering. Uh, we have a question here that's also related to my uh, other question, and that is uh, uh, talking about the very first uh, scene, uh, if I may call it that, um, you know, when you actually interpreted uh, Tanya de Rosario's and the walls come crumbling down by actually creating this little wonderful house that you proceeded to take apart, isn't it? Uh, a yeah. question from our audience is, you know, did you make the house model yourself? And I guess I'll add to that by asking, you know, uh, how did you decide actually to use the model of a house to uh, translate the book? So, um, yes, I made the house myself. And actually, within ASMR, there is a subgenre where it is, instead of like focusing on the person whispering, it is about like miniature objects and little furniture and little like mini food making and when I was reading Tanya's book it was like automatically my brain is imagining this house with the furniture and I'm sure as everyone reads the book they will have their own imagination of what her apartment and house look like and what all the all the different textures she described in the house look like so for me it was this automatic link between that kind of ASMR style and all the textures in the book um, yeah, and I, I guess I'm reading like Ong Kim Ping's question about um, whether I use different objects or different videos. Yes, um, I always approach like, unless I already have a, an idea of what I want, um, usually I think of the concept first, then I find what are the sounds and objects that make sense. For example, G mentioned the, the hourglass um, for that one because the poem was all about, the book actually was all about time. So the objects I chose all had some relation to time, like the watches and the little silver thing was, was actually the hand of a clock. Yeah, that's terrific. Uh, just to bring you back, you know, to the and the walls come crumbling down again, just for a moment, uh, because we have the author here uh, tonight, um, Tanya De Rosario. Uh, so hi, Tanya. So glad you actually can join us uh, tonight and actually see this, you know, interpretation, this translation of your work into an ASMR performance. Uh, Tanya asked a question, you know, um, do you work in a soundproof space when you are producing this uh, performance? Um, it's not professionally soundproof, but I tried my best to like pad the walls and the floors with soft things. And I also had to film this uh, on a series of nights from like 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. <laughs> at the time when no one in my household is moving. Um, I have quite a big family, so when everyone's walking around, it's super loud. So I have to get that moment when they're all in bed and no one is, literally no one is moving. <laughs> wow <laughs> it's quite a lot of work isn't it to do that especially uh you did that in singapore which is not a quiet place can you say a little bit about you know yeah. what are the conditions like working in singapore versus when you worked in new york because you started whisper lodge in new york but you have now you know uh, based in new uh, in singapore yeah, I mean, if we're talking about sound recording, actually, it's the same because New York, if anything, New York might be even a little bit more uh, noisy than Singapore. But uh, when I was in New York and working on Whisper Lodge, we were primarily doing live performances. Our whole thing was that we uh, were one of the first in the world to do ASMR in person. So I would go to people's houses and perform to them and we would do our own show, like our own 90 minute show. And then now that COVID has happened and I'm in Singapore, I'm, I'm trying to do more things online. So doing this video, for example, it's, it's a strange uh, 
artistic process for me actually because ASMR started off as an online phenomenon and then I started uh, kind of making ASMR in a physical setting and now having to go back to the, the original form of online, um, I sort of like become a newbie again, even though I've been doing this for the past four or five years. No, that's so incredible. Yeah, to actually, you know, bring the art from, you know, from online to real life and now you're back, isn't it? All right, to its uh, origins, right, so to speak. Uh, it's a wonderful, you know, return, um, that's right. Uh, in the second scene of, uh, or in the third scene rather, you are actually interpreting uh, Paula Mendoza's uh, book of poems, uh, Play for Time. You really actually referred to it. Uh, Paula is here too. Hi, Paula. Uh, so good of you to join us. And uh, Paula says, uh, that was so incredible. <laughs> Your interpretations are just as playful and delightful. Uh, and she says she notices that, um, she noticed that you use a feather leaves, uh, rocks, and she's curious, what is the softest loud sound or the loudest soft sound you have achieved from a natural object? That's a very interesting question because I haven't really thought about it, <laughs> but I, I imagine like the softest loud sound. I was really surprised by, there was uh, one moment in the performance where I used this like yellow leaf and that sounded super loud to me, almost like really coarse paper. Um, and I was surprised by that. Um, versus like, if you use like leaves and twigs, you get more of a rustly sound, which almost feels like wind blowing in the trees. Um, so every time I make these videos, actually, before I, I film them, I have to just gather a bunch of objects and like, try them and see how they sound. I don't always automatically know. A lot of it is trial and error. Mm, mm, mm. Very much part of the method, isn't it? Yeah, as I was watching, you know, your production, uh, your performance, you know, I was so struck by, you know, how the sounds are produced, you know, out of so many factors, isn't it? You know, it's the pressure with which, of course, you apply, right, to the object. But it's also the different parts of the objects, isn't it? You know, whether it's in the middle of the object or the ends of the object, you know, even though it may be the same object. And then after you've crushed it a little bit, then if you crush it, if you crush it further, it will sound different too. So it's really, you know, so many myriad uh, factors are in play all the time, which makes it, you know, so, so interesting, right? Because the sound is constantly changing. Uh, we have another question here for you, uh, which is, you know, perhaps at the opposite end of, uh, you know, the softest sound. Uh, we have a question from uh, Alta. Alta Price is here. Hi, Alta. And she asks, you know, um, how ASMR will interpret scenes and topics that are not calming, right? You know, uh, like, for example, a, a book with violence in it, you know, or is the entire genre focused on, you know, serenity, calmness, and quietness? That is a great question. Um, ASMR by its nature is meant to be super relaxing and calm so if I were to be asked to, to kind of interpret a horror film I can still a, a horror book for example I can still use ASMR techniques but I wouldn't probably call the output like an ASMR video however there is this very interesting trend online because there's so many videos these days people get really really creative so you can actually find like doom stay prep ASMR video or like a vampire trying to kill you ASMR video all sorts and some of them are really like uh, on that line of is this scary or is this relaxing um, so I don't know for me those videos don't really work to relax me but it's still a very mm. uh, cool creative exercise um, I imagine it'll be like uh, do you know that movie The Quiet Place A Quiet Place um, and it's all about sound and like I would interpret it in that in that world um, but I wouldn't necessarily say like that that, that it's ASMR mm, mm, mm. You're right it's so interesting isn't it which makes me think of course of your second scene uh, you know that you perform with uh, the short story collection The Foley Artist by uh, Rico Villanueva uh, Siasoko and Rico is here too Hi, Rico. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and you said, of course, you know, how honored you are that your work has been interpreted right, by such a wonderful artist as uh, Melinda Lau. Uh, so, you know, 
if not, you know, uh, violence, then what about melancholy? Because the story that you chose to actually translate, so to speak, is kind of a melancholic, you know, story, isn't it? About this Foley artist, you know, who's kind of at the end of his life and is isolated from people. And yet, you know, that, you know, perhaps because of that or because of that, you know, of his uh, entire career, he's so super sensitized, isn't it, to sounds. So he has the company of sounds, if not human sounds, right? So how does ASMR then, you know, deal with melancholy? Or does it also, you know, kind of shy away from that, if I may put it that way? I think most of the videos you see online, I guess, uh, will shy away from that because the whole point of ASMR in some ways is to provide like escapism, provide you something to shift your focus away from all the sad things in your life. Mm -hmm. So um, you often find content that, that um, either doesn't engage with sad things at all or they are there specifically to comfort you and they'll say things like oh you had such a hard day but it's okay I'm here now and I'm mm. here for you yeah mm. yeah yeah no that is such a very important function isn't it that healing function you know because <laughs> the world is you know violent enough you know the, the world is melancholic enough so sometimes it's really good to be able to you know put some distance right between us and the world and come you know to something uh, as uh, soothing and calming as ASMR is. Uh, that's very true, I think. And that's what we're hoping to do too, of course, with the festival, you know, I mean, while not shying away from the harsher realities, you know, around us, you know, the pandemic and the political uh, climate, all right, that has enveloped the, the whole globe, right? This anti-democratic uh, uh, movement, all right, that we see internationally. Uh, yet, you know, we, we talk about, you know, coming to the festival, all right, with a theme like the politics of hope, with a great sense of hope, because we, we want to know uh, what, uh, we want to know the full extent of the problem, first of all, right, before any kind of solution can be proposed or acted upon. But finally, we also want to come together to give each other hope, all right, to, because not necessarily a solution, uh, but some way forward, uh, some path that uh, we can open up some kind of collaboration or solidarity uh, that we can actually develop and uh, maintain. Uh, so that's actually very, very in line, I think, what you just said about, you know, what ASMR tries to do with what the festival also attempts to do through its various uh, panels and events. Yeah. We have a question uh, from uh, Rob Gilson here. Hi, Rob. <laughs> Glad you can join us. And his question is about uh, demographics. Uh, whether you find that ASMR is more popular with certain demographics or some geographical population, you know, and so forth, you know. So who, who are the audience? Who is the audience for ASMR? Uh, ASMR, actually, the term was coined uh, by this person called Jennifer Allen in America. So I would say a lot of the early phases in, of ASMR, the audience was mainly in America and then also in the UK and Europe. But now ASMR has become super mainstream. So audiences are everywhere around the world. And you can actually find um, lots of uh, different languages for ASMR videos. The term ASMR also has been translated into many other languages. Um, and remember how I said like ASMR was related to this like muffled sounds you used to hear when you're a baby. So some people actually super enjoy not uh, like listening to content that's not in their native language because then they don't need to bother about understanding it and they can just like fully appreciate the sounds. Um, so, I feel like there are definitely like certain regions where ASMR is more popular, like uh, the US, UK, and then actually in Korea and Japan also. Uh, but no one has done a study on where exactly uh, all these spots are. So it's just from my anecdotal experience, I guess. Mm, I see, right. No, that's so interesting. Uh, we have another question uh, from uh, one of our guests from uh, Li Yang Dong. Uh, and the question is, how did you enter this art of ASMR? So I guess we want to know your personal story, right? How did you actually begin on this path? Yeah. Um, in the further part of her, her his, uh, their question is about, you know, uh, you know, whether there are more female ASMR performers rather than male, which I think you covered a little bit. 
but if you can talk a little bit about your own personal experience, right, uh, as a self-identified uh, woman, right, entering to ASMR, that would be wonderful. Yeah, so I started this whole journey ever since I was a kid, actually. I have ASMR and I had it ever since I was a child and I never really knew what it was or how to express it, but I knew that it was this distinct feeling that I would get sometimes when I watch TV or when I would just like in, in real life, like getting a haircut or something. Um, and then I started watching lots of strange videos online that were not called ASMR, that were other things. And then that led me to find out in comments uh, that there is this thing. And I Googled what ASMR is, and then I finally realized, holy shit, this thing has a name and there's a community and I'm not strange. Um, and so it was quite uh, pivotal for me to find out that I wasn't this like, weird person alone. Um, then since then, I got really interested in like, where did this thing come from? How many people? I was, I just got super curious and then I started to use that a lot in my own art practice. Um, then that just slowly led me on this journey through immersive performance and combining my interest in performance and ASMR. Um, and now I guess I, I, do ASMR professionally. <laughs> um, and I think the, the uh, question about like uh, female or male performers, there are definitely a lot more female performers. And in fact, when we do our shows, our cast is very, very much female. Uh, and we are, <laughs> sometimes we have to intentionally make an effort to like cast uh, more diverse, like male performers. Um, I think it's just because like the the role of ASMR is to be this like calming, relaxing thing, and naturally um, we get a lot more um, interest from females versus males. Um, at the very beginning, also people didn't even know that there were uh, male ASMR artists. Um, it's only fairly recently that more and more people have joined. Mm. Right. No, that's very interesting. I mean, uh, part of me wonders, of course, whether, you know, um, when people attend ASMR performances, you know, and they will feel more comfortable with women rather than men, really speaks to the fact that, you know, unfortunately, there's just so much sexism, misogyny, isn't it, uh, mm -hmm. in our society, and therefore, you know, anybody might feel less comfortable uh, with a, a male performer, uh, not because of the performer himself, but, you know, just that, you know, um, that social climate, actually, that we move in. Uh, perhaps a final question uh, for you, since you were talking about your journey and the way you have actually, you know, continue to pioneer uh, ASMR, uh, your future plans. And this is a question from Jake, uh, who says uh, he has seen your Whisper Lodge performance uh, through Whispered uh, ASMR, and he has never coveted an experience more than that. <laughs> That's a wonderful compliment. Uh, what are some new uh, environments and experiences you and Whisper Lodge plan uh, to create for your guests once we are safe to gather again? Well, thank you, Jake. <laughs> um, well, once things become safe again, our plan is definitely to continue doing our live shows. We usually perform once a year in New York and LA. And now that I'm based in Singapore, hopefully I'll be able to do one here too. And in the meantime, um, we have a YouTube channel where I am supposedly supposed to create content regularly, but I, I've not super consistent I should be <laughs> I, I will be uploading more videos there <laughs> um, so that's where you can find us in the meantime for, for everyone who's interested in ASMR oh thank you so much Melinda for actually that really terrific performance you know um, and then you know uh, taking so much time and being so generous and uh, sharing of yourself and of your work all right during this uh, discussion so um, yeah so uh, uh, we hope all of you will join us uh, for the actual festival. This is the preview, all right, uh, to a whole bag of goodies. The festival will be taking place uh, on October 1st through uh, the 3rd, Thursday through Saturday. Uh, so if you signed up early, uh, you will get extras such as interviews and excerpts and updates from our authors. And if you like what we are doing for cultural exchange, freedom of expression and equal rights, 
please consider making a generous donation at Fractured Atlas, our fiscal sponsor. Uh, we do not take any uh, state uh, sponsorship. We rely on uh, private individual champions like you to do the work that we do. Uh, finally, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. The night is not over yet. It's still very young. If you are in New York uh, and in Singapore, you will have the rest of the day to actually tune in uh, to our festival preview two, Hitting the Bull's Eye, featuring the comics artists of the online journal, New Narrative, which will begin in 30 minutes. The Zoom link is given in chat. So click on the Zoom link and please join us, all right, uh, in uh, 30 minutes time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Thank you so much, Melinda, uh, for that wonderful performance. And uh, we will say goodbye now. And we will see you at the festival. Bye, everyone. <laughs>